Come gather round the campfire and hear our ghostly tales of chilling terrors, darkest woes, and anything that goes bump in the night. So cuddle up with your best friend or dare it alone. The darkness is closing in and spirits are calling your name. This is Fireside Phantoms. It's uh, spring and spring just sprung. getting the vibe to do some cleaning here. Some spring cleaning. Some some out with the old and with the new. Nice. Are you do some gardening as well? I'm not a gardener. I wish I was. Yeah, I'm not either. That's not really anything I can do to not spend time in the yard. I'm going to take. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't you have to like mow the, the yard a lot? Yes, and that's still true. I'm going to have to mow <laughs> probably today, in fact. Because it's the grass is getting long and it's warm out and not wet today, which is incredible. Usually it's pouring outside. So I yeah. know. Yeah. Maybe we'll cut this show short. So I can do my yard work. No, so we can just <laughs> go outside and enjoy the sun. Oh. It's a rare thing. Oh, I know. I know in, in March it's <gasps> oh, very rare. I know. Well, inevitably, anytime, Holly, you research the paranormal. Somehow, I don't know if this happens to you, but the search engine will combine with the algorithm of conspiracy theories, aliens, and cults. They all go hand in hand. Cool. So your last episode on the Majestic 12 yeah. and Stephen Greer got me thinking about other stories I've heard about regarding advanced technology that we supposedly had and eventually lost. Okay. One popular theory that I know you haven't heard of is that our history has been reset several times due to worldwide cataclysms or regional events with nefarious groups who, through their power, want to portray a different past. Some think, most recently, our timeline was reset in the late 1800s. Hmm. We, we just got done watching that uh, season 1899 or 1899, 18... that show. 1889. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. You did tell me about that. Yes. Yeah. What a waste of time. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, that's too bad. That's I wish bad. I would have reset my history and not watched it. <laughs> you can clear your browsing history on your 1889 on your browser. Yeah. It, it was just this. It reminds me of Lost, where you just get bigger and bigger with the mystery, but then nothing really gets it's solved. It does not have the payoff. The at journey the does not have the payoff. No. It and was at, too bad. at some point, you start to realize these people don't have any idea where they're taking us. Yeah. <laughs> it could have been really good, I think, but oh well. Mm -hmm. So back to my story. We know that history is often told by the victors or survivors of war, and typically our schooling in the subject centers around the culture and our country where we grew up. At best, most of us had a couple semesters on world history and geography, so what we may think is a conspiracy or a historical cover-up may just be a misunderstanding of a particular group of people or ancient continent. Most religions and historians agree at one time our Earth has gone through cataclysms which have transformed our planet. Most of my research on this topic comes from the book The Mud Flood Hypothesis by Charles River Editors. I also have listed the forums and websites and videos of additional information which have collections of photographs you can refer to after the episode. Cool. So my story today is on the mud flood theory, which is tied to an ancient empire or landmass called Tartaria or Tartary. Tartaria. It sounds like something from that of Game of Thrones. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's how I pictured it, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It is thought that this group of people or land area was affected by a massive cataclysm bearing much of the landmass in mud. Mm. Historical maps have shown this area to encompass much of Russia, extending to the Caspian Sea, the Ural Mountains, Bulgaria, and up to the southern borders of China, India, and Persia. Mm. Tartary supposedly existed up until 200 years ago, from 1450 to 1850, and was comprised of master builders who created some of the beautiful and amazing megalithic buildings and structures we still see standing today, like the St. Basil Cathedral in Moscow, Sturza Palace in Bucharest, Romania, the Imperial College in London, Moscow's Cathedral of Christ our Savior, Monroe Palace, the Waldorf Astoria, hmm. the Singer Building, the Capitol and the White House, Penn Station, 
Alexander Nevsky Cathedral, the Bund of Shanghai, Biltmore House in Asheville, North Carolina, and the list goes on and on worldwide. Hmm. Proponents of this theory claim Tartaria had access to free energy and had advanced technology weapons. The story of Tartaria is claimed to have been forgotten or purposely hidden by nefarious groups who do not want humanity to utilize the technology. Kind of the same thing as uh, Stephen Greer said. Sure. About uh, Majestic 12. Mm -hmm. People who believe in suppressed history claim you only need three generations to effectively rewrite our past. Allowing the true narrative would go against us evolving as a species and instead would show how humanity regressed in its knowledge and capabilities in areas of science, medicine, and architecture. Others argue that certain groups want to profit off of a fabricated crisis that would then in turn promote wealth from certain industries like oil or natural gas. A declassified document from the CIA in 1957 mentioned that Tartaria's history was purposely removed from the conquerors who invaded the area from China and Mongolia. Hmm. A map shows a Chinese Tartaria region coexisting in 1824. But soon after, in 1850, the name Tartaria was replaced with the Mongolian Empire and China. The friar Giovanni del Carpine was sent by Pope Innocent IV to investigate the strengths of the Mongol culture and its military. His recorded travels and observations were compiled into a large body of work. The title translated as History of the Mongols, whom we call Tartars. It was published in 1839, and people will point to the work as proof of the Tartarian Empire. Russia comprises most of the alleged region, and in Anatoly Fomenko's new chronology, the Tartary name is an earlier term for Russia, and the R was added to demonize the Russians as being like the Hellions of Tartarus, as told in Greek mythology, regarding an area of Hades, the underworld of the damned. Fomenko had some wild theories that most of our standard historical accounts of mankind's inventions were all doctored and fraudulent. He gave credit to the Russians for literally everything in the world. So he was paid by the Russians? Yes, he he was Russian. From building the Great Pyramids and for being the first people to colonize America and creating an elaborated story of the Roman Empire. Furthermore, Fomenko alluded that Genghis Khan was also Russian. (laughs) Well, that's new. (laughs) That's very new. Interesting, okay. Yeah, Nikolai Levashov, another Russian author who practiced psychic healing and studied occult subjects, concluded that Adam and Eve's story was a myth and tells of an alternate account of mankind's appearance and referred to Tartaria as, quote, the land of the holy race, end quote. Levishoff claims these inhabitants had their origins from extraterrestrial intervention. Hell yes. Woo-hoo! <laughs> <laughs> uh, go aliens. <laughs> About 40,000 extraterrestrials came through a stargate on Earth and were given advanced abilities, who then passed down technology and trained a special group of people, <laughs> the Majestic 12, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, to conserve the secret knowledge. Until the Tsar system of Russia took over and demanded the removal of any secret sects that were practicing the beliefs of ancient Tartaria. Supposedly, Tartaria was the largest country in the world having its own government and flag, its own language and culture. The flag featured a griffin. The griffin is part human, part eagle, part lion, and part androgynous bull. The culture had a philosophy that if you take from nature, you always give back more. I don't know how they knew this because there's very little written about Tartarians in historical texts. Yeah. But supposedly they were good guys, right? Okay. Okay, so there was a vocal recital program found in the year of 1849, which listed several vocal selections sung by a British opera singer and a bishop. Among various songs and languages listed, Tartarian was one of the featured languages on the program. Huh. So despite bits and pieces of the Tartary name being found on documents and maps, most archaeologists and historians believe there was no cover-up, just a change in updating language when the larger empires divided up into the modern, smaller countries. 
Tartaria was just a slang term for describing this vast area, much like how the Greeks used to refer the people of Europe's northeast region as the Scythians. The Slytherins. Yeah, the Slytherins. Here we go. I knew there this was going to be a Harry Potter This has to be here. Harry Potter with the Griffin. Especially when you said Griffin. And the I, thought you was, I thought you were going to say Gryffindor. Uh, Gryffindor? <laughs> oh, oh, oh. I wanted to. I bet you did. I did. I know. Many who follow the theory that mankind's history was reset have proposed our greatest cathedrals and elaborate buildings across the world are much older than we are told and were repurposed when discovered and repaired versus our history claiming that various countries have built the structures from its foundations. Fans of this conspiracy state, it is highly unlikely that these massive buildings would share similar design features and building materials, despite being separated by culture, oceans, and continents. They claim that archived photographs only show work being done on some of the buildings, but not the entire construction of the building from beginning to end. Also, it seems unlikely there would be just a couple grand structures in one area and then a vastly different quality of other buildings in the same vicinity being built with very simple design and on such a smaller scale all built during the same time period. Many of these enormous structures were also said to have been built in as little as two to five years. With the advent of social groups online, the Tartarian mud flood conspiracy has grown to include all the normal secret societies who are keeping humanity enslaved. Hmm. There are claims that the Tartarians had the help from giants. Others suggest that the citizens of Tartary are the descendants of Noah and possess the lost Ark of the Covenant, which is claimed to be a high-energy laser weapon. They point to photographs of gigantic structures with doors six times as tall as the average human height and a visible second set of doorknobs that no human under 10 feet could reach. Hmm. It is true that stories of giants appear in many texts and cultures throughout history. Yep. I have seen old photographs depicting unusually tall, gigantic people, but we have very little evidence of a mass civilization of them being used as master builders. Hmm. It is thought a great deluge of mud and water wiped out the entire area of Tartaria and was part of a great reset in the 1800s. But nobody adequately explains how it happened. Some say it was from a volcano which spewed steam and mud instead of lava. It occurred sometime between the Industrial Revolution from 1760 to 1840 and the Gilded Age of 1870 and 1900. But no documents ever mention a mud volcano exploding or any such mud catastrophe. And I think that if it was that recent, we would have heard more about it. I mean, that yeah, wasn't that be, long ago. It would be hard to remove everything like a catastrophe like that from mm -hmm. history. Yeah. Um, but that's what they're saying was done. Do and, you, yes? and you heard that um, the whole no arc thing that they think they found Noah's Ark? no. No, I didn't know that. That's I remember seeing that years ago. Um, it's they believe there's a there's some kind of an old uh boat on top of a mountain. Mount Ararat? Yeah, in Is Turkey. It? Yeah, in mm -hmm. Turkey, yes. And that they have a really difficult time getting to it. But I think that they think that it's dated back to those biblical times. Wow, that's cool. But they haven't been able to, last I heard, they hadn't been able to get in there to excavate it out of the mountain. Um, but it's on top of the mountain because that's where it ended up when the floods, are you going to talk about that? No, oh. no. I think I, they can see it from aerial view. Yes. But the government of Turkey is very protective. They don't want to allow... Anybody outsiders to go there. in there to dig yeah. it out or yeah. anything like that. I'm not sure why they think it would be Noah's Ark and not just a boat. I think because of the dimensions, because mm. in the Bible it states specifically the dimensions okay. of the boat. The boat itself. Noah's boat. Yeah. Uh -huh. And it matches the dimensions. But they also found the Ark of the Covenant because that's different. Well, Indiana Jones found it <laughs> in the 1930s. <laughs> Good one. Holy. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. So and it's it not a warehouse somewhere in yeah, the United States. It did some damage for yeah, sure. It sure did. <laughs> so, <laughs> did you hear um, Harrison Ford is going to be in another Raiders of the Lost Ark? I've been seeing the trailers for it. He's I, like 80 years yeah, old, dude. I, it's I'm like, what? not Not believable. Not yeah, believable at all. Like, yeah, he's, huh. yeah. But you know, he's great in uh, 1923. You should watch that. I haven't seen that. That's really good. It's really Better good. than 18... 
99 or yes. Yeah, probably. 1889. But 18, 1883 is really good. And that's a different show. <laughs> wow. Altogether. All these dates. And we he's have to not, like... he's not in that one, but he is in 1923 and he's not in 1899. So just so you know. Yeah. And I got a new perfume and I think it's also called 1889, 1889. So it's hard to keep track of all these 1800s. It's like, what are you trying to tell me universe? Yeah. Why are we going back into history all the time? Geologists and volcanologists say that mud volcanoes do exist, but they are typically very small and would never blow out enough power or mud to destroy an entire empire. But strangely enough, many of the grand buildings upon inspecting do have several stories built, including windows and doors below street level. They also show a wide band of dark staining on the outside walls of much of the lower levels. Occasionally, up to six floors were thought to be completely buried underneath the surface of ground that covered the entire area. After the reset, some of the buildings were dug out and repurposed. Buildings hundreds of years old and located across the world also show these similar findings. Some theorize there might have been an earthquake that caused the soil to liquefy and sink the buildings. Hmm. It is known that natural causes can cause buildings to settle over time, which reminds me, have you ever been on the underground tour in Seattle? Yeah, but it was so long ago. So they um, show you this whole underground city and streets that were then eventually built on top of the old city due to fires that um, we are told destroyed that whole area in 1889. Oh my God, <laughs> here we go again. It's all connected. It's, it's, I'm telling you, I'm a believer now, for sure. No, I was amazed that the street level used to be 10 to 15 feet lower than what it is today. And one thing that I remembered Okay, so they they were just saying that, you know, originally they just had piss poor judgment in building all the flats at sea level. Yeah. And one of the funniest story that our tour guide told us was that when the citizens flush their toilets during high tide, all the contents would reverse, exploding out oh, of the geez. commode. <laughs> oh, God. So nasty. Oh, nasty. Yeah, I would just be like, yeah, we need to move the street level oh, up, please. God. Anyway, back to the mud flood theory. Those who believe in it state that World War I in 1914 was staged to destroy any remaining evidence of buildings from the Tartarian time period. The document cited in 1957 by the CIA did mention a directive ordered by the Central Committee of the Communist Party to rewrite the history of Tartaria in order to hide the facts of aggressive acts that had taken place between the Tartarians and the Russians. The document does not talk about ordering any demolition of buildings during World War I or World War II. There was, though, an order in 1917 to confiscate all the large bells in the region, which some found as a rather odd request. Hmm. The logical explanation was that these huge metal bells were removed and melted for weapons and ammunition. Mm, yeah. But the conspiracy tells a different story that these bells were taken down due to the powerful resonance they created. Ringing the bells frequently throughout the towns produced a healing sound frequency that was used to create a very tranquil atmosphere of peace. Many Europeans mourned the loss of their beloved bells, which they had become accustomed to hearing daily, morning, noon, and night. The clergy stated that the bells being turned into artillery went against the very nature of their original purpose. I'd be sad, too. I love the sound of gigantic bells yeah. ringing. It's yeah. so beautiful. It is. It's very cool. You know, there's very something therapeutic to them as long as I'm not trying to take a nap. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and they're impossible. When I used to go to my old job, I would, in the morning, I'd park, and we had to walk to the elevator and go down to the main part of town. Yeah. Anyway, there was a, like a Catholic school there, and they would ring bells in the morning. Oh. It was really cool. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. And they also say there was free energy abundant everywhere when Tartaria existed. Video footage is found on YouTube showing trams without antennas. Photographs of strange narrow pinnacles or needle-like spires found on many turrets and domes of the architecture. They say that this is not for design, but is an older forgotten technology that used atmospheric energy called ether, which is conducted through the copper domes and the spires, which were the antennas. 
even the gigantic fireplaces were conductors of this free energy or ether and was not used for burning wood. Hmm. They claim that many of the enormous fireplaces were too shallow and had a metal back plate attached to the inside wall of the fire chamber and channeled the heat into the room much like a modern day furnace. The proof is that many of the old fireplaces are pristine without the buildup of any staining or black soot. And old photographs show pairs of crystal globes sitting on a stand called Arians in the chamber of the fireplace. At first glance in the pictures, it just looks like ornamental designs for fun when the fireplace isn't in use. But others say the fire chambers were used for ionizing the air through the home's air duct system and for teleporting to other areas of the home. Oh, cool. Oh, you know, this, they must be Harry Potter fans to come up with that. That's true. Well, <laughs> ether isn't ether spirit. Isn't ether what, is like the force, the right? Force, the it's spiritual force. The energy yeah. of, of force. So it's like a time that like the chimney area is kind of like a uh, tunnel for travel, right? Like a flu. Like a transport. Yeah. A transport, like they did in Harry Potter, where they went into the chimney and yeah, a port, a port key, where they just you know went to another location. I didn't see that movie, but yeah, Harry Potter. <laughs> well, I saw the first one. <laughs> I don't remember them going into the fireplace though. Did we're they? gonna have a girls' night, and we're gonna watch all the Harry Potters. <laughs> I um, watched the first. You must one, connect the third with one, me I think. on these. I know it gets very adultish the further you go along. Well, I've been. I've had a lot of people tell me that I need to tune into the Harry Potter universe and I bet I find them entertaining I just never got that hooked into it I guess yeah I I think like if you loved the books you would be hooked into it but if you didn't start out with the books I can see how possibly you weren't continuing with the whole thing yeah because some of the earlier movies were very childlike mm. you know they were meant for yeah a child, a so she kids. kind of wrote to her audience as they were, as growing, they were up. growing up yeah Aside from the Harry Potter teleporting aspect of these fire chambers, mm -hmm. yeah, they're using these crystal globes on the stands to help ionize the atmosphere or capture that ether hmm. that comes down the chimney. Interesting. So, you know, a very interesting idea. Mm -hmm. um, but there's very um, wide disagreements and theories of how these fireplaces were used. I feel like every day we come across a new outlandish idea of our world. It makes our ghost stories very blah, blah in comparison to the ancient <laughs> alien stuff. Right. Yeah. I actually almost prefer talking about ancient alien stuff because it just is so fascinating. Yeah, it is interesting. Um, another argument for the mass extinction of the Tartary or Tartarian Empire is the current low population currently in that region. In Siberia, we are taught that the I population was gonna ask is you, sparse. Is it Siberia, mm -hmm. okay, okay, and limited due to the frigid, barren climate. Mm. However, apart from a few cities, the climate is no colder than northern Europe or regions of Canada in the winter. I didn't think anyone lived there. Like you just described it as being this vast, barren space. That's how I always pictured it. Me is, too. You know, yeah, yeah. Huh. I I don't know. Let maybe you can look that up. Upon review, there are apparently plenty of cities in Siberia. We just can't pronounce them. Yeah, we can't, but we'll try. <laughs> One is Novosibirsk. Sibirsk? No, Novosibirsk. Sure. <laughs> N-O-V-O-S-I-B-I-R-S-K. Chef Boyardee. Novosibirsk. Whatever. And then the next one is Omsk. O-M-S-K. Omsk. Omsk. And then... Shelabinsk, C H E L Y A B I N S K, Shelabinsk, Shelabinsk. Um, and it says Siberia is a geographic and historic region and not a political entity. There is no single precise definition of its territorial borders. So this argument is, you know, it's obviously kind of barren up there. And so what happened? The people must have disappeared suddenly, and some think that their own energy death ray from the Ark of the Covenant malfunctioned and vaporized them all, turning them into dust. And when the rain came down, their ashes became a layer of mud covering the streets and buildings. Others think it was the same aliens who gave them the technology who came back and changed their mind, wiping them out or possibly abducting them in mass, like rumors of the Mayan civilization's sudden disappearance. But most feel, no, they just migrated away from the area 
when the mud floods occurred. And it was thought that the growing empire of China soon became the ultimate enemy of ancient Tartaria before they were, you know, destroyed. The Tartarian army was nicknamed the Golden Horde. Some proponents of the theory go so far as to propose that the Great Wall of China was built by these grand builders of Tartaria and not the Chinese, which history teaches us. Hmm. Marco Polo wrote an extensive and detailed account of Asia in the 13th and 14th centuries and failed to even mention the wall. The Great Wall is not seen on any maps predating the late 1600s. So most of its construction occurred in the 1700s when the Tartarian Empire was at its glory. Oh, interesting. The proof, they say, that it was built by the Tartarians is that the wall appears to have the fortified side facing China, which strategically makes no sense. You have one side with crenellations, extra height and thickness, while the other side has just a normal wall built at knee height. The wall was built for protection against China, not the other way around. Hmm. It was suspected it was built to keep the encroaching Chinese out of Tartaria as they were becoming more and more of a threat. The openings on the wall are also on the north side towards the former Tartaria, not on the south China facing side, which would then make sense if you wanted to allow mobility for the Tartarian army. Proponents of the Tartary mud flood theory state that evidence of their grand architecture and designs worldwide are proof they migrated or worked in harmony with other regions before they were destroyed. Example of these styles and massive structures are seen everywhere, even in places like Tokyo and the United States. So, Holly, let's pause here and take a couple look at some of these pictures with me. Okay. Those are some really interesting pictures. And you can see um, some of the ones that you showed me, the fireplaces and how ornate and big they were. And then um, the one other picture that you showed me of the lower structure being dug out of the mud was pretty interesting too. Mm -hmm. And just how like all across these countries, there's very similar design features. Yeah. It was just, yeah. It's just really odd. Um, yeah. You had the one site that showed it, almost every country had architecture like this, mm -hmm. comparing it to people who were just doing basic stonework. And I know the architectural differences were pretty vast. They also are given credit for the grand pipe organs we see in many cathedrals. Um, they're claimed to originate from Tartarian design and were originally used to be part of many buildings which resonated at a sound frequency of 528 hertz. Mm. This frequency of this particular sound wave is said to promote miracles and repairs DNA. It is associated with the color gold or yellow and balances the solar plexus chakra. Because of its ability to repair DNA, this frequency could create healing. It is thought our whole musical scale was changed, so our instruments are now tuned to a different frequency. Hmm. So we are no longer healed by the music we create. Hmm. This frequency of 528 hertz had been claimed to reduce hangovers. Well, that is such a clever <laughs> way to get the pews <laughs> packed with the congregation yeah. early Sunday mornings. Yeah. I'm sure a lot of our St. Patty and, you know, yeah. celebrations were like, man. So you need to get to church so I can get over this hangover. Yeah, we need to hear the pipe organ oh, to heal my hangover. Wow. Um, even the incredible detailed stained glass designs were said to be part of somatics, which is a pattern, kind of like sacred geometry that occurs with sound waves reorganizing matter. Huh. Have you seen those videos where they take different sound patterns and waves and they focus it on a plate of sand or water and it, it makes shapes and crystals and like really geometric designs? It's fascinating. Hmm. It is said the architecture use sacred acoustic geometry to maximize the resonance and help the population connect to the higher force or cosmic energy, allowing the pineal gland to remain open for divine guidance. That actually really makes a lot of sense. And I was just telling you on Gaia, there is a whole uh, TV series called Sacred Geometry uh, with this guy, Robert J. Gilbert. I think he's some kind of a, here he is. PhD, um, a USMC instructor in nuclear biological chemical defense. Wow. <laughs> so he's got quite a title. Um, but basically, he goes into all this sacred geometry and talks about 
different shapes and how they um, allow the human body to open for spiritual connection, kind of what on the same line of what you're just talking about. Yeah. And part of these Tartarian builders, um, people say they designed it on um, land that they built star forts on. So in the shape of a star. So who knows if that's true, but these star forts also are all over the world. Mm. And there's doesn't really seem to be a purpose for it mm-hmm. other than like a pretty design you see from the air or mm-hmm. something. Mm-hmm. We're told that horse and buggy were the primary vehicles to haul the stones and bricks from quarries to build these incredible edifices seen across our country and world. The construction of towers as tall as 47 stories. The U.S. Mail Service, remember, only began in the early 1850s. The first stagecoaches to deliver mail on a 2,800-mile southern route between Tipton, Missouri, and San Francisco, California, specified a 24-day turnaround. Mm -hmm. Um, Sometimes it would take months to get communication delivered in bad weather. So... How did all the hundreds of world exhibitions and fairs communicate to set up and bring millions of people to their events from all around the world? The effort involved to build these places alone are enormous. The so-called colonial expansion, though, produced such ridiculous amounts of these buildings. I struggle myself to find any conventional explanation. Hmm. Tens of thousands of similar styles of buildings popped up all over the world within a very short time period. Hmm. Very often in places where any thought of an appropriate infrastructure would be ludicrous. Many proponents of the mud flood theory think the elaborate buildings were repurposed into asylums or hospitals for all of the orphan Tartarian people and their children. Well, you know, here's a theory. You just said that the male... U.S. mail started in 1850. Perhaps they came up with some plans and then they copied them by hand and then mailed them off to all these different countries <laughs> so they could look at them and go, oh, yeah, this makes sense. Let's just build this here. I like it. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, it could happen. Um, I think so. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's send the let's send the little horses on the boats. Yeah. To cross. Yes. You know, maybe maybe we had griffins well, maybe, back then or white snowy that owls. Flew. Yeah. The, yeah. The horses yeah. flew with the mail. <laughs> yeah. Maybe those were lost. That's probably it. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's an interesting theory because some of these grand buildings that were mm. asylums could hold up to 200,000 people. Wow. It's so weird. That Mm. many of these asylums were built like castles. Mm. Take, for instance, the Salt Lake Asylum. It's 50 miles away from the nearest populated city. Mm. And at that time, it was the most magnificent, beautiful building. Mm. (laughs) Yeah, we're going to build something that resembles a castle and just fill it with insane people. (laughs) Okay, yeah. Uh, That is, you know, if you think about it, you look at all the old asylums, they do look like... They look creepy like incredible that. yeah things i'd be like i want to live there yeah but sign me up some crazy neighbors maybe but you, yeah you might <laughs> it is wondered why so many children and people were also rounded up some claim it was from the war right that left all these orphans but typically it is the men killed not both parents I know there was the orphan trains that also redistributed children to various regions after the war. But one additional thing to consider is that the world population in 1900 was 78 percent less than it is today. Oh, wow. So the amount of workers needed to complete a building project of just one of these massive buildings would just require hundreds and hundreds of workers. I doubt everyone were employed by, you know, as carpenters. I really do. But, you know. Perhaps yeah. that is the huge secret of the Masons. Yeah. After all, the organization literally means master builder. Yeah. Perhaps they know the real history. And most of the building construction that we do see in photos was just some sort of repair work and remodeling after finding these buildings. Hmm. Maybe. One crazy part of this conspiracy is that the original old world architecture of the Tartarians lacked any bathrooms. Because they were breatharians and lived off the ether and water. They didn't need food. Oh, wow. You know, I did did hear a rumor when I was in France that the Palace of Versailles, which, you know, people consider that to be a building originally Tartarian, Uh uh, was remodeled to add bathrooms. But 
it was built as a hunting lodge first. So that makes sense to me why it didn't need a bathroom. Yeah. But and later, though, they did add bathrooms in the 18th century. But still, that's that's odd. That, that is interesting. Like even Versailles didn't have bathrooms huh. at first. Water and air. That's mm-hmm. all they needed to, to survive. Huh. Wouldn't that be nice? That would be. Sad life, but, but nice. But I, I do like, like eating. Yeah, I do there's too. some good food out there. It's fun to eat. So, you know, I am going to wrap up this conclusion because it just goes on and on and on. And I do believe, you know, some of these theories might be plausible. After all, Tartarian money has been found with their token griffin symbol. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And there have been huh. old maps, huh. which they do show the name being used. And, yep. you know, I do have to agree. I've been so amazed at the beautiful architecture being built in the early to late 1800s. And I've always felt to me like, wow, this is built on a scale way too large and grand for the average person. Like, yeah. like it wasn't built for us, right, right? Right. But then again, look at Las Vegas, right? You're going to Las Vegas. I hurt my neck yeah. trying to look around at everything towering <laughs> above me. <laughs> yeah. And we didn't build Las Vegas for giants. No. I don't think they came in and found Las Vegas Just like that. Giant dug it egos. out. <laughs> Just, <laughs> just giant, giant egos. Yeah. So yeah, so maybe, Holly, it was a trend that spread worldwide mm-hmm. and eventually just became too expensive to continue. What does modern architecture explain about these buildings? Like they just say, yeah, it's just they knew how to do it back in those days. And, you know. Yeah, basically. And they and architects are saying, look, you know, it looks like the same type of building, but it's not quite the same. They are slightly different. Um, Mm -hmm. If you really look, because architects know everything and Mm -hmm. they're not exact replicas of each other, even though they really do look it to me. Mm -hmm. Um, So, yeah, they're they're saying no. And to me, also, this whole idea is just too much to digest Mm -hmm. and encompass because it connects to every conspiracy out there, Mm -hmm. which would be like, okay, that makes sense. But it's impossible to cover every aspect of this in a podcast in this episode. Yeah, that's a lot of information. So it's it's definitely an interesting theory, possibly open to further evidence. But I I found after a certain point going down the rabbit hole, I I reached the mud pit and I just couldn't explore any deeper at that point. My head started to hurt (laughs) just like yours did with my Shakespeare and the Titanic episode I did. I was like, okay, this is just get, making my head hurt now. <laughs> but you know what's really funny, Holly? Mm, what? Um, there is a street in San Jose, California called Tartarian Way. Oh, uh, really? Yeah. And so then I went online. There's also a Tartarian Court in Charlotte, North Carolina. Huh. So you do see evidence of this all over the place. And I think we're missing out on the most obvious proof. Which is? Tartar sauce. Tartar sauce. Hello. Because <laughs> that's what they ate. Yeah. Why would they call it that? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, maybe that was the only thing they ate. No, Mm. no pastries, too, because they call them tarts. Oh, (laughs) jeez. Okay, we better, before I start my comedy show, we better wrap this up. Anyway, everyone, go look at the pictures and links. Tell us what you think. Yeah, very interesting. Thank you, Carol. That was great. You're welcome. Yeah, uh, makes me wonder if we've had this um, sort of architecture out here this whole time, and it was actually from aliens. I know. I'm going to, like, start walking around now looking for evidence of mud. Oh, on yeah. the base of buildings. <laughs> yeah, you'll probably find Actually, it Actually, in, in Oregon, it's yeah, really it common. Be, it won't be hard to find. Yeah, and New yeah. Orleans is sinking, so that's yeah. really easy. There you go. Yeah. Okay, guys. <laughs> Good right. night. Good night. Furthermore, Fomenko alluded that Genghis Khan... Furthermore, was a great guy. No, (laughs) (laughs) had their origins from extraterrestrial intervention. There we go. I'm going to say this again. I got to say this again. (laughs) I'm like stumbling. That's a mouthful. There we go, Josh. Yeah, you've been doing pretty good with all the big words. Thank you. (laughs) Supposedly, Tartaria was the largest country in the world, having its own. Sorry, I'm I'm fading already. (laughs) Got a long way to go. You know, the griffin is part human, part eagle, part lion, and part... Uh, Man, bear, pig. Geologists and volcanologists say that mud... Vol- God, <laughs> <laughs> volcanologists? So Vul- Dr. Vulcan. Spock is going to make an uh, uh, appearance in your podcast <laughs> no, today? No, no, no. Went against the very nature of their original... Per- per- <laughs> Help me. <laughs> 
as the flames die down, do remain undaunted. Though all hitchhikers are ghosts, and all dolls are definitely haunted. Hey guys, be sure to follow us on Instagram. Our handle is at Fireside Phantoms. If you have a spooky story you would like to share with us, send it to firesidephantoms at gmail.com and you may hear it on a future episode.